And of course, the lines are open 011-542-2186. You can join us on social media. In studio, we have Hendrik Makaneta. He is a higher education transformation uh, network member and also an education activist. So we're going to start with you. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I mean, you know, you see on social media people taking a, uh, the mickey out of it and saying, you know, Mani's ancestors are clearly very active because she got this uh, 14 million rand windfall. But it's more serious than that, especially in light of uh, access to higher education for many of uh, poor South Africans. Yeah, sure, uh, it is true. Uh, but I think uh, from our point, or our point of view is that uh, obviously, uh, you know, Sibongile did not do anything wrong. That is the bottom line. And, uh, you know, we don't think that she should really be held uh, accountable for especially using the, some of the monies that were deposited into her no, account. No, no, but she, did, she reported it according to, you know, newspaper reports. Uh, she reported it to the authorities. So if you say she hasn't done anything wrong, knowing that this was not money that is due to her, the, the usual allowance is 1,400. It's many zeros away from what she's entitled to. So what do you mean by that? No, I'm, I'm saying that, uh, you know, the service provider particularly the institution, should be held uh, uh, accountable at the end of the day uh, because they are the ones who deposited the money into her account. And of course, you know, uh, given the material conditions on the ground, you know, South Africans, particularly students, are suffering. And, you know, if a student receives such uh, a lot of money, obviously, you know, a, a hungry stomach will not really go to great lengths to try and, uh, you know, reverse uh, or, or, or not use whatever that is available. I'm not sure. Aren't we making excuses, though, for what essentially is criminality and theft? Because we agree that she's, aw she's aware mm. that this money did not belong to her, you know, having yeah. received the stipend for, for at least uh, into a second year. Yeah, all, all I'm saying is that, yes, of course, uh, the nature and character of our campuses is such that our students really uh, do not have. Uh, and the... Uh, but at the same time, we, we want to say that, uh, you know, the institutions should, should have seen these things in advance. You know, they should have uh, monitored uh, uh, these uh, uh, funds uh, mm -hmm. uh, in advance to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, such things do not happen. So I'm saying that uh, BLF has already issued a statement and uh, we really are in full support of uh, the statement by BLF to say that, you know, some of those funds that has, has already been used. In fact, our view is that she should just be given uh, amnesty. All right, she's a young person who's growing, and uh, she'll probably learn from the mistakes and, you know, that uh, has happened, and, of course, uh, develop into a, a responsible citizen in the near future. All right, let's get a, a view from Kahisho Mamabolo, NFSA's uh, spokesperson. Uh, Mr. Mamabolo, thanks so much for your time. Are you also of the view that Swong Ilemani should be given amnesty and uh, uh, the, uh, the facility, or rather, Walter Sisuli University, right? This is a bad debt. Well, good evening. Um, we are still waiting as the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, an official report from Walter Sisuli University to provide a detailed account as to what has transpired. So as we speak, we are following what we had in media reports and so forth. So NESFAS hasn't received an official account from uh, from Walter Sicily University. So we, we, we can't even begin to pronounce what should happen to, to these students. And also I must mention that uh, we have an agreement, an MOU signed with Walter Sicily University as a, 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 a university that will disperse uh, the funds that they receive from NSFAS. And from the student side, we have an agreement with the student that we will fund her from her first year until the time that she completes her studies. And that amount for her studies has been stipulated in the loan agreement which she signed. So she knows how much her total cost of studies is and also how much she's, pay, she's paid or she's supposed to receive only for, uh, for this year. And that is the amount that has been sent to Walter Sicily University. All right. We have not sent, we uh, have not sent, we have not sent Walter Sicily University 14 million for this student. All right, Rema Mabula, please stay on the line. We have our first caller from the Northern Cape, Opa. Good evening to you and thanks for joining us. Hello, Cynthia. Hi, how uh, are you? Uh, thank you. Cynthia, I don't want to condone anything uh, concerning this student. 
What I would like to say is that this student, if she was really poor, this man, 800 and something thousand, should have at least been spent by her on her member of the family who are poor. She's one of the poor people according to the category she qualifies. If that is the case, 800 and something thousand is a lot of money. I, I spent those, that money, I think, in four years to come. I'm working, I'm a policeman. That money that I will earn, I would think I will earn in four years to come. But yeah. I really, I'm, I really, I really, I don't agree with this. Uh, so student. you don't think she's as innocent as uh, 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 Re Makaneta here is trying to portray her? That you know, because she's hungry, you're deprived. You've never had so much money. You want to make up uh, for lost time, as it were. I don't think she's she's a person that. All right, Opa, thanks so much. It, uh, he's a policeman calling us from the Northern Cape. In studio, we have Tabo Shingange, University of Pretoria Deputy President of SRC and Student Finance Officer. Good evening and good to see you. Uh, what do you make out of all of this and uh, uh, what your what, what Spong Elemani had done? But before you respond to that, we have Sabelo from Pumalanga. Hello to you. Good evening, Sabelo. Hello. Good evening, ma. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm not 14 million rich, though. Hello? Hey, I'm, I'm 14 million poorer. How are you? <laughs> all of us, all of us, we wish we were that student. However, um, let us be honest now. Uh, from us as, as a society, you see, we cannot uh, blame the student. She must, she must not be blamed for uh, receiving this money. If we are to blame the student, it is the way she spends the money, the way we are seeing it uh, as, we, as, it, as it is being portrayed. Uh, on social networks and everything. Should she pay How, back or not, Sabel? Sorry? Should she be made to pay back the money or not? That is where I'm coming to. No, mm. she must not be made to pay back the money because it was not her fault. It was the fault of um, the service provider. It was the fault of the university. She must not be made to pay back the money. What we can condemn uh, as, as society is the manner in which she spent the money. However, if... A poor student from uh, a poor background, waking up uh, one minute, I am changing organizational t-shirts Monday to Friday. Then the next minute, I, I wake up 14, with 14 million rands in my account. Obviously, I'm going to be shocked. And it is something I'm not used to. I'm going to spend this money. No, but you have to take responsibility as well. I think Opa in the Northern Cape, for me, put it uh, in better context that if she was really poor and needed the money for, to sustain her family, she would have spent it on that. Not Parisian weaves to the value of 3,000 rand in lavish parties. Sabella, we're going to have to leave it there. Benjamin in Kokstad, good evening to you. Good evening, Cindy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Mm. I, I, I think it shows that the system, payment system for NFSAS, it's it's not accurate. Uh, that's that's what I've, I've I've picked up. Second point is that the student should should should, should the student also must be blamed because I believe when they fill this form for application, it states clearly how much is going to benefit from NSFAS. Mm. Now, when I do the calculation. I've, I've, I've noticed that the, the, the student has used 136 plus a month. So she should have, she should have uh, for, right from there, uh, start to maybe investigate. And it, it can also appear, it's also appear on, the, on, on her account that the money is from an uh, NS1. Mm. She should have be honest because many students, uh, without uh, staying at home because they don't have funds. Such that 800,000, I mean, how many students would have paid their, their fees? I, I would say the student should pay a portion of what she, she has spent uh, not relevant to, his, to her uh, uh, fees. Mm. That's my view. All right, much appreciated, Benjamin. Kali and Guiani, good evening to you. What's your view or question? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much, Cindy. Um, Lord, I tend to understand that um, there are few things that are not done correctly when we look at the funds that are coming from NSFAS uh, funded to the universities. Because the first thing that I, I, I need to understand is that the university should know as to how much is it that they are expecting coming from the NSFAS. And then from there, the, 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 the university itself 
out of the funds that they have received, they should know as to how much are they paying to their students, to how many students are going to be paid. So this, it, has, it happened about three, four months. So the question is, the monthly basis when they do the balancing, what was it that is happening in that case? So I'm trying to understand that here, it's one of the things that just happened, and you'll find that it has been always happening in this station. Mm. Then which at this time it was caught uh, like this. All right, so Kali, but, we're going to have to leave it then. Kian is saying that this may not be a, a sporadic incident. There may be others that are hidden. Sihle mm -hmm. in Soweto, I wish I was uh, giving away prizes today uh, with all the calls coming in. Good evening to you. Hi, uh, Cindy. Uh, good afternoon with your panel there. Mm. Cindy, you know what? Let's not kill the nation. Let's not deceive Sibongile. Sibongile did the wrong thing. Bongile knew how much did she apply for. Bongile knew that the money that was deposited was coming from Nespas. Surely Bongile was also having the numbers for her Nespas offices. She should have called them to inquire about the money that was deposited into her account. Into her account. To make things worse, the money that she spent, she did not spend it on her education. She spent it on something else. I believe that she's supposed to pay the portion that was not supposed to go into her account. Let us not kill the nation. Bongile's integrity has to be questioned. She is not honest. All right, sister, thanks so much for calling us from Soweto, to the voice of reason, I would say. Tabashingange, are you going to <coughs> defend your colleague or, or, or a contemporary saying that, uh, you know, she, she's not uh, liable? Look, I think the issue is much bigger than, than we can anticipate. And I think to, to blame the student or to look directly at the student is to give off a misdiagnosis to the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger problem here is the issue of how we have privatized student loans and bursaries and how that becomes susceptible to issues of corruption. And I think that's where we need to interrogate because this 40 million rand scandal is not the first time it has happened in institutions of higher learning. So there is a scheme of corruption which involves the issues of, of student finances and loans that we need to interrogate. And the lack of the Department of Higher Education's oversight role on NASFAS and how it allocates funds that needs to be looked at. To focus on the student and what the student has used the money on, I, I think we are, we are you know, focusing on something that is not the bigger issue at play here. The bigger issue is how you have 40 million rand unaccounted for in your books. I mean, had the, the, the slips not been posted on, on social media, you'd have no knowledge that the student is sitting uh, with 40 million rand in the particular account. How did your books balance at the, at the end of that first month when you're doing your, account, your accounting things in, uh, in, with the, with the private um, service provider in that, in that particular regard? So I think really there's a bigger issue we need to interrogate, but it doesn't take away from, of course, to, to, to question the, the certain things that, you know, maybe the student could have done a bit better. Uh, but to blame solely the student, uh, or to look at the students and say they must pay back the money, I think for us there's a you bigger lesson to be learned. I don't think so. All right, Rema Mabolo, just going back to uh, our callers, you know, saying that one, on the one side it could be just sheer na naivety uh, and lack of maturity, and secondly, maybe the uh, her living conditions having influenced this. We know that she went on a, a spanning, a, 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 you know, a splurge with her and her friends, but again, the, the issue of having too many hands in the pot or fingers in the pot that they are, are loopholes for corruption or manipulation. What is your view? Do you think that the department should revisit how the monies are being disperse, dispersed to universities? Well, um, what I can, I just, as NASFAS, we don't want to get really into the discussion about the spending of, of, of the student. I think what is important for us as NASFAS is to reassure the public that the 14 million that um, was erroneously paid, um, if it, it turns out after the investigation that was, if it turns out that that money was public funds, it, though, that money will be recouped. There's no doubt about that. So if and it's private investor funding, just to, for clarity, yeah. uh, it may not, it's not a big concern. If, if that money is not money from the public uh, purse, uh, it means that uh, th there is no uh, uh, doubt in terms of our system and, 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 and so forth. And, uh, and the other thing is that I think I should explain how the disbursement process works uh, from NESFAS to the institutions. For the past uh, 20 years or so, NESFAS was giving money to the universities and universities will pay uh, uh, the students accordingly. And that, that process was um, stopped in the past four years where NESFAS is trying to centralize a system where 
we pay money directly uh, to the student's account and also paying uh, at the institutions for tuition and accommodation. So in the case of University of Walter Sisulu, the student applied, we assessed, we decided on how much she must get. And that goes for every student. And then we sent an advice report to the university with a specific amount that the student must get, and we paid that specific amount. So what the university has to do is to just credit the student accordingly in that manner. So, and the, after that, they give us a report every month. So, NEFAS does not audit books of the university. Uh, so, even All right, if they, so I'm just saying, let's just go back in this particular yeah. case, Yagas Bungi um, in, in, if the NFSAS had paid a particular amount to her directly, if I'm understanding you, then over and above that, the service provider of Walter Sisulu University then paid for the other uh, obligation in terms of tuition or whatever it is. Is that what you're saying? That the 14 what, million came over and above what she had already been paid? What, what, what we are saying is that we gave Walter Sisulu the total amount for Subongile. And what was expected from Walter Susulu is that they will credit her account accordingly for tuition, for food, for books, and other things that we advise them on. So if an error crept in where 14 million was paid into Subongile account, it could not be the 14 million that comes from Nesfas because there isn't an advice from Nesfas that Subongile must get 14 million. Mm. All right, please just stay on the, on the line, uh, Mr. Makaneta. Just a, a last call, Cecilia, for me saying that we, we would otherwise be encouraging a, a criminality culture where you can get away with spending money that you rightfully know is not yours without taking the necessary responsibility. Second year accountancy student ought to know better. And anybody of a reasonable mind would also know that you receive money. I'm not trying to even be moral or even Christian about this whole thing. You know, uh, It's just as basic as that. Yeah, but now the key question is, uh, as Bongile is a student uh, right now, as we speak, maybe the question that we must ask is, uh, where, where must she get the money from? Now that she's a student, she's still studying. She's not working. Uh, I think that we need to be realistic. Uh, perhaps what we could do, uh, we could find a way of uh, discussing with the department, uh, higher education, both uh, NSFAS included as well, to say, Perhaps at some point, you know, some sort of community service could go a long way in ensuring that we, you know, we bring a, a sort of punishment to the student uh, so that she can also learn from the her mistakes and, and, and take full responsibility for the money that was spent. Not sure, uh, granted. I don't think that anybody's calling for her to necessarily lose the opportunity to have a higher uh, education qualification, but I think mm. the lesson also ought to be learned. Mm. Uh, to stay on the, uh, please hold the thought. Elias in Pine Town, Etigwini, hello to you. Yes, Cindy. Yeah, Bo. Cindy, let me say that a student, he doesn't have to pay any money on uh, back to MSRAS. Of course, the NSFAS is, is not the person who's working who puts the money to the student's account. And the student, he didn't on himself take the money from the NSFAS account and put to the head uh, account. Now, the person who has paid the blame is the person who transferred the money from an source to the student. And the student did, there's nothing wrong what she did. Mm. I'm honestly saying we must be right. The person is not fit for your job. You don't have to employ. Mm. That's how the money is going this way. All right. Thank you so much, Elias, calling us from Pine Town in Durban. But what happens then to other deserving uh, students that apply based on merit, that they, they fit the criteria of you know, not being able to afford high education, and there's no money because there's certain glitches in the system or, or fraudulent activity that drops them of that opportunity tab? I think, you know, the incident teaches us one thing. You know, it reaffirms the call for free quality higher education. It would have avoided all uh, the mismanagement of funds that come from the side of NASFAS. Uh, in fact, there was, a, there was a statement released by, I think it was NASFAS, if I'm not mistaken, 
where the argument they were trying to make was that the 40 million rand into the student's account does not disadvantage or does not affect the allocation of funds that went to um, other particular students. It then begs the question, then what was that 40 million rand intended for to begin with and how are you going to distribute it if it did not affect me, Tabo, a student at Wusu, in terms of my particular allocation? It would have been a crisis if, for instance, 40 million rand came into my account and now the student over here has not received particular money because the money has been pulled. But when the student receives and you receive and I receive and you say that, mean, that money does not affect any other student, it raises other serious concerns to say then what was that money intended for to begin with? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mamabula, do you have like a, a discretionary fund where there's miscellaneous spending, for example, as Tabo rightfully puts it, if this is not going to negatively impact other uh, students who are on, on the beneficiary list, so what was the 14 million rand there for in the first place? I think the mistake we are doing here is to dissect uh, this discussion without Walter Sisulu here, who uh, have an agreement with uh, Intelimali, which both of them compare their books in terms of what they paid, when and how. We, 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 no one of you can tell me now that Walter Sisulu said this 14 million is a 14 million of Neswas or in Telimali that this 14 million is a 14 million of Nesvas. And that's why we are seeking a report from Walter Sisulu. They must tell us that this 14 million is indeed the 14 million from Nesvas. And if they answer that question, then they must say, in that period, what happened to the students who were supposed to receive the 14 million? Mm. They must explain that. So until such time that they come forward and say, indeed, this money was a Nesvas money, we, we can then uh, 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 begin to, to jump into conclusion. I mean, what if tomorrow they wake up and they say, in fact, that 14 million was the Intelimali 14 million they were going to later on uh, advance. So what I'm saying is that as NASFAS, our interest here is that the University of Walter Susulu needs to give us a remittance report into some detail as to how did they utilize the money we gave them from the day they paid the student and how much was remaining and how did they disperse the rest mm -hmm. of the money to the rest of the students All so right. that we can find the gap and then we can also f uh, 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 make sure that our students are not disadvantaged by this. It is our interest as NESFAS that this debacle does not disadvantage our students. All right, uh, Rema Mabolo, we're going to have to leave it there. NSI spokesperson, and indeed uh, we had sent correspondence to the university, or the Walter Sisulu University, and still waiting a response from there. But in studio, we had Hendrik Makanita, his Higher Education Transformation Network member and an education activist. And we have uh, Tabo Shingange, University of Pretoria, Deputy President of SRC, and a student finance officer. And you at home, most appreciated uh, panelists, thanks indeed for calling in. We have to take a quick ad break. We'll see you shortly.